Welcome to GreatLakesBass.com. We're here in mid-November on Lake St. Clair with the official tournament record holder, five bass limit in tournaments, bass tournament, Scott Dobson. How are you doing guys? It's uh, November 11th, uh, it's about 9.45. We're just heading out of uh, Metro Beach. Gonna hit Lake St. Clair, we're gonna go fish uh, in about 18, 19 feet of water. Probably throwing tubes, drop shots, and if the water's cold enough, you might even throw a, a blade bait, like a silver buddy or a vibe or a poor boy's uh, blade bait. Um, water temperature's gonna be about 46, 47 degrees. Nice and clear, moderate winds, pretty much light and variable. Hopefully, we're gonna catch some big fish. I'm hoping we can get a few over five and maybe even catch that uh, elusive uh, six pounder and give you guys an opportunity to come out here and show you guys how to catch these big fall fish here on Lake St. Clair, which I feel is truly the big bass capital of the Great Lakes. Uh, as far as sheer numbers and size, Lake St. Clair has been hot. I just, I love the fall. Spring's nice, it's fun, but the fall, there's something about getting them to bite when they're actually feeding and then catching those big fish that are just full of food, you know, and they're doing the same thing we're doing. They're thinking about bulking up. I mean, look at me, I'm good at bulking up, but uh, it's just, Oh, it's so much fun and, and, and this gorgeous day like this and normally out here this in the summer What do you hear here a loud constant roar, but listen this time of year we can hear Everything that's happening. I mean mark was talking the other day that uh, He said where's that guy talking? He was like a mile away and it sounded like he was right next to us You can't do that in the American side in the summer <laughs> No, it's great anytime after uh, after Labor Day. I mean all the recreational boat traffic gets off the lake and this is truly when the lake turns into the sportsman's paradise and we don't have to battle all the uh, boat ways from the yachts and all the idiots running around partying and tossing beer cans off the side. And I'm always excited when I come to Lake St. Clair in the fall but just two days ago I caught my biggest blade bait fish I've ever caught a four or five pound smallmouth so I'm looking forward to today maybe having a shot at, uh, at, at beating that maybe who knows. Let's hit it the motor's warmed up anytime on these cold mornings I always like to let my motor warm up for about five minutes just get everything nice and warm and they got the seal set in because you get a lot of expansion and contraction this time you're going from the cold mornings to you know it gets a little bit warmer into the mid morning so always let uh, like to let my outboard warm up uh, for about five ten minutes warm it up that way you don't risk any uh, cold season or anything like that so let's go fishing Dan throwing a uh, actual Silver Buddy brand blade bait. It's uh, 5 8 ounce and uh, just letting it fall down to the bottom. I'm just slowly lifting it up and fluttering it back down and 95% of the time the strike occurs as soon as that bait hits the bottom and it lays over on the side they come down and pounce on it. So when you lift up that's when you feel the fish on there. Uh, it seems, in my experience, when the fish are really aggressive, you actually feel them hit it, but uh, when the water is really cold, they just pretty much eat it off the bottom. This is just an actual silver buddy. I take the uh, factory hooks off, put split rings on, and I put uh, number uh, four. Uh, these are uh, Gamagatsu uh, Magic Eye trebles or short shanks, so the hooks don't tangle up on themselves from front to back. So. Um, the treble or the, the split ring on the blade bait, you know, a lot of times it folds over and hangs up on the top of the bait, but I think you get a lot better uh, action with the split rings on the blade bait as opposed just to the, the standard factory hook. So, uh, and I think the fish stay on a little bit better and you got a better quality hook than those cheap uh, bronze ones that they put on out of the factory. When you're using a blade bait, do you uh, set the hook different or fight them different with it at all? When I'm fishing a blade bait, I, I see a lot of people that aren't used to fishing it. They have a tendency to have their, their rod way up high, and they're just kind of hopping it. What I try to do is I try to take my rod and keep it, you know, about mid with my body uh, and just slowly lift it and have my rod, I guess it would be at about between 2 and 3 o'clock as far as like a, a clock scenario. That way, when I get the strike, I can reel down and pull up and get a good hook set. You don't really set a hook with a blade bait unless you really feel them strike it. 
but it's usually when you lift up, you feel that fish on there. And if you have your rod, your rod tip way up high, and you lift up your bait and you feel that fish on there, you got you got no momentum to bury the hooks into the fish's mouth. So I try to keep my rod tip between like two and three o'clock. I think the like the perfect ideal temperature is like that 43 to 45 degrees when they really like it. Uh, you know, I caught them on it when the water temp's 52, 53 degrees, but you know, the low to mid 40s is the ideal temperature. That's when everyone's sitting at home watching football, of course. And really, I mean, a lot of guys overfish a blade bait. And uh, what I tell people when I take them out to fish a blade bait is less is best. It's you just want to get four or five flutters on the blade, but you don't need to lift it way up and drop it back down and overwork it. It's just the two or three flutters, drop it back down. Two or three flutters, drop it back down. Um, and that seems to generate a lot more strikes. All right, let's get out uh, here. No sense fishing where they're not when we know we can go where they are. Basically, we just moved out from the mouth of the river. We came out here in the middle of uh, Lake St. Clair on the Canadian side, and we're in about 19 and a half feet of water, and uh, got some uh, isolated weed beds out here, and then there's some clean sand spots on the bottom. We're going to check this out for about five or ten minutes and uh, see if the fish are here. If they're not, we'll just keep on bouncing around this whole general, it's about a five square mile area where I think, and a lot of the other guys that fish out here late in the year, uh, this is where we think the fish winter, uh, just because there's not a lot of current out here. The water stays relatively clean. There's a lot of perch out here, a lot of crayfish, so let's see what happens. Oh, got him. Perchy. Got it. It's not big. I think it's a perch. Oh, oh wow. Live well, live well, live well. The size of that perch. He goes in he goes in the bucket. I knew it know. felt funny. That is a big perch. That's bigger than my perch the other day, maybe. That perch I just caught, here's two baby uh gobies. You can see the fat head. They're a little degraded, but you can see the fin on this one. But those are definitely gobies. And uh those perch are eating those gobies, small ones, so there should be some bass around. Felt him hit it, hooked him right in the mouth. Nice little uh, two and a half pounder. Pretty fish. Oh! Good one? Just decent. Is it a sixer? It's a four. That's bigger than four. Is it? I don't know. I live in Lansing. We don't catch a lot of big fish part of the year. For a minute before you come back and dive again. Yeah, that's a four four pounder all day. Yeah, I mean, you're a chomping on the two trying to bite me with that little wintering fish. Oh yeah, a nice chunk of thick, muscular. I like the muscular ones, the ones that are working out. Man, it's nice. Good, good shoulders, good mass. Yeah, very thick, very powerful. Like it. That's a good one. Beautiful. Not as big as uh, Mark's. No, nope. no, he's and he'll say that anyways, no matter what I do. So he's still saying that about Tuesday night. Oh, it's true. He's still saying that about Tuesday night. I'm looking at him go right back down. That was nice. There's one. Good. 
too. Double, double. That's a crazy thing. First double of the day. Let it hit the bottom. Yeah, just gotta. How about the blade? Yeah. Jumper. I just have fallen on this. Oh, really? Well, that's the first one I've had all day that wanted to jump like that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's November 11th, 2010. It's got about 55 degrees, light and variable winds, and the bass are biting like crazy. There he is. Oh my goodness. Absolutely choking. Yeah. Right down the uh, right in the pack. Right in the packs. It's big. Big? Yeah. Big goldy. Goldy lots. That thing is gorgeous. It's probably four seven, four eight. Just sheer mass, head to toe. Lake St. Clair, November eleventh, two thousand ten. That is a Great Lakes bass right there. I drop yeah, that's a toad. I dropped the uh, uh the weight, I lifted the weight up to drop the bait down over the bottom and I just jiggled it a little bit and he thumped it. My biggest, my biggest one of the day. You Another double. You guys have been catching all the big ones. Caboose. Finally got me a big one. I love it when they do that. Oh, when they snap? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good one. It's my biggest of the day. In the good spot where you don't lose them. Yep, you're not gonna lose this one. Oh, oh, there we go. Swooped right around it. Look how fat that fish is. How big? Four and three quarters. Oh, nice. Yeah, he's got a killer belly oh, yeah. on. Killer belly on him. There he is. Oh, he came off. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'm not going to be able to get bit because my, my buddy's is tangled. There he is. He came back. Oh, he feels big, but I can't tell. He's small. Not 
I have no idea how many we caught today. I have yeah, no you, idea. When you catch this many, you kind of you kind of stop counting. But uh, we caught, I don't know, I would say we caught well over 50, yeah. 60 fish. My thumb is raw. I got a little blood spot there. My wrist and my forearm are sore. Well, Scott, thanks for an awesome, hey, awesome day. It was amazing. No problem. I mean, just look at this. What is it again? November 11th? November 11th. November 11th, and it's flat, calm, beautiful, warm. I mean, I could probably take this off yet. Just an amazing, amazing day, and what an amazing fishery.